Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and trainer. In this episode, I am going to talk about C++ sanitizers. And these are tools that have been added in Clang and recently in GCC that can do a runtime analysis of your code. So Clang has the most complete support for sanitizers and was the earliest compiler to support them as far as I know. So I'm going to start here and do a quick rundown of what we've got. We have the address sanitizer, which checks for memory addresses that you access that are out of bounds. And then we have thread sanitizer which can do things like detect if you have a multi-threaded program that is doing unsafe thread things uh, at runtime that you didn't notice at compile time or when you're writing the code. And I have heard really good things about the thread sanitizer, although I have not used it a lot myself. We have the memory sanitizer, which does checks to see if you are accessing uninitialized memory. We have the undefined behavior sanitizer, which attempts to look for things that you're doing that are invoking undefined behavior as far as the C++ standard goes. And this is um, interesting because a lot of the things that it might be able to find, the optimizer is going to optimize away. And some other things that you might hope that it would find are things uh, that, that it hasn't implemented yet, but it's probably still worth giving a go. And then we have the data flow analyzer, which can analyze the flow of data through your program, but it doesn't work in an automated way. The first three, four that we've mentioned so far, address, thread, memory, and undefined behavior, all work by adding instrumentation to your program. The data flow sanitizer, though, you have to call the instrumentation. And then we've got the leak sanitizer, which tries to look for memory leaks. And um, we're going to cover briefly today the address sanitizer and the memory sanitizer, just to show how they are used. And then as an exercise to the listener, you can go and play with the other sanitizers based on what I've demonstrated here. So similarly, GCC has implemented its own versions of these sanitizers, and I think they actually um, use the implementations that are provided by Google. But we've got the address sanitizer, thread sanitizer, leak, and undefined sanitizer. And you might notice that we are missing the memory sanitizer. So it's not a one-to-one -one relationship for how these are implemented and the way that they're actually implemented in each compiler is slightly different but they both work under the same basic principle and that you need to pass dash f sanitize equals and tell it what you want it to do at compile time and link time we're going to be doing very simple examples here so we're only going to show the compile time version of these flags but it's the same thing so we're going to start with this very simple example where we have this character literal array of two strings and we are going to try to access the fourth element. And why the fourth element? Well, because if we were to try to access the second element, that's technically not invoking any kind of undefined thing that's um, guaranteed to be valid memory because it's one past the end of the array. But we're going to go for the fourth element so that we know we're doing something wacky. And we're going to see what results that we get. And we're going to start with G++ 6 because that's what I have installed at the moment. And trust me, it's not going to make a ton of difference here. Now, first thing you'll notice is we're not getting any errors here, warnings, even if we turn our warnings all the way up. And if we go to execute it, it's uh, simply doing nothing. We're not getting any kind of runtime failure. But if we were to turn on the address sanitizer, perhaps we'll get some different output. So now we can see when we go to actually execute the program after it's been compiled with the address sanitizer that we get this list of things where it is telling us that we have done something bad. We've done a stack buffer overflow with some sort of read of size 8 from RA out, but we're getting um, just an address, an offset into the binary here, and we get to see some other interesting information about a stack dump and uh, the address dump of the data around the buggy memory access. So if we compile with debugging symbols enabled, 
then we can see we actually get that the error occurred on address.cpp line 7. And that is just about perfect because it is in fact on line 7 where we're actually doing this illegal access into the memory. Now Clang gives us almost the exact same capabilities and we are going to compile with Clang++ uh, 5.0 to get one of the more recent official releases of Clang. So in this case we compiled and we actually get a warning that tells us hey you know array index 3 is past the end of the array which only contains two elements. So that's awesome and because we enabled W error we're actually getting this as a error instead of a warning. But let's take this back to here and see that with Clang even with warnings turned off we are still getting a warning here. So we have to appreciate the extra level of analysis that Clang does for us. This is great. So we've done the same thing. We've compiled with Clang and we're going to run our executable now and we see that we get basically almost the exact same output with a minor caveat. We are not getting the line number in our executable where this error occurred even though we have compiled with debugging symbols enabled as we can see here. So it comes down to an issue with how Clang is shipped on Ubuntu Linux and that is because it is looking for a tool that helps it correlate the location of the binary to the source file and that is called its symbolizer and it is looking for LLVM-symbolizer but LLVM-symbolizer isn't installed on Ubuntu. We've got these dash 5.0 dash 6.0 versions. So we actually have to tell Clang where we want it to find that symbolizer. And we do that with the ASAN symbolizer path. Clang is a bit picky here. If we tell it LLVM dash symbolizer dash 5.0, we're going to get this error that says external symbolizer path is set to something which isn't a known symbolizer. Uh, that's a bit weak in my opinion, although I didn't implement this so I really can't complain. So what we need to do instead is specifically call out the specific version that doesn't have that dash 5.0 in the name. And if we do that and we scroll back, we can now see that we are getting our very specific error from Clang, which now tells us not only the line but the column number. So we've explored the address sanitizer for a bit. Now let's explore the uh, memory sanitizer, which, if you recall, isn't uh, supported by GCC. So our version of the memory check here, this was carefully crafted to be an example that probably is not going to warn on any static analysis because we are starting with this uninitialized bool and then we are sending it to our setvel and in setvel it is attempting to set the value but notice only one branch of the code actually sets the value otherwise it uh, returns without setting it so basically if we don't pass any arguments at all to our main so our number for argc which is passed into setvel is going to be 0 or 1 it's not going to be greater than 1 for sure I believe on every operating system it will be 1 so our B is not going to be initialized, and then when we get to this line of code, if uh, B, we're going to be operating on an initialized value. So we've compiled with GCC, and we're going to execute this, and it prints nothing. And, you know, it's made some determination as to whether or not it thinks that it has a initialized Boolean, which... Uh, is I guess false in this case it's equal to zero for some reason and if we compile with debugging we don't get any difference and compile with clang we get the same deal so these are all evaluating to false but we know that it is an uninitialized value. So let's see if we can capture that uninitialized value. And we are going to do that with our clang sanitize equals memory. And now when we execute, we get use of uninitialized value here 
at uh, this location. And we have the same issue that we had with our memory sanit or address sanitizer with the memory sanitizer. But we need to actually say msan underscore symbolizer underscore path here, execute it, and I forgot to compile with debugging symbols enabled. And now we can see on line 14, we are doing an uninitialized access of a memory value. And to take it one step more interesting, we are going to recompile and pass in this f sanitize memory track origins flag here. And now it will track the location of the uninitialized value that we have accessed and we should be able to execute it again and we can see here that B was created on the stack on line 11 and then it was accessed uninitialized on line 14. So be aware that the memory sanitizer and the address sanitizer have some runtime performance overhead because it has to add instrumentation into the executable but they can both be absolutely spectacular tools for helping you to find random crashes in your code, and I strongly recommend that you run your unit tests in your continuous integration environment with the sanitizers enabled. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.